U.S. privacy law in 2023. Now, I'm watching from across the pond, but um, I'm watching very keenly. And there's been a lot going on in 2023. So I'm going to run through quickly where we're at. And then I'll ask you, Deborah, some questions about how to approach uh, privacy in the U.S., given all these, this patchwork, as they call it. So this year, We've got five laws taking effect, signed in in previous sessions. We've got California, CPRA, which uh, amends the CCPA. Uh, That's done. That came in effect on January 1st. And now the the very own privacy regulator, the the CPPA, will start enforcing uh, in July. And I think they're going to want to show their teeth. Um, We've got the Virginia Consumer Data Protection Act took effect also on January 1st. Then all the other laws look a lot like Virginia. So these are the new Virginia-style laws. Poor California started off the privacy trend and has been uh, rejected (laughs) their their kind of model of privacy law. Uh, So we've got Connecticut, Colorado, and Utah all taking effect this year from July onwards. And then the following states have signed comprehensive privacy laws this session. Indiana, Iowa, Montana, Tennessee, and Texas. Surprising one for me. It's pretty impressive as well, you know, comparatively. It's not it's not a weak law. Um, and then we've had other bits and bobs too. Florida passes digital bill of rights. You'll notice a slight note of disdain in my voice as I repeat the title of this law because it's not a bill of rights. It's actually not a very good law. Uh, we've got Washington My Health My Data Act, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, Deborah, which is a seriously robust and broad health privacy law. Yep. And Nevada has copied that too, but theirs is a little less, uh, it's a bit narrower. So we've also got the, the FTC on a bit of a rampage, I think seven or eight privacy related actions this year already. So we've got about 20% of states now, well, exactly 20% of states with comprehensive privacy laws in place. How are you feeling about the direction of travel, Deborah, in broad terms? What what are your thoughts on what's happening in the US? Do you, do you think it's a positive move? Do you, do you have any issues with how things are going? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a good question since, uh, you know, we've been trying to get laws passed for so long, both federally and state, that... Uh, I've stopped paying attention on the play-by-play on how they're the bills, what bills are in, uh, you know, in state legislatures and what's going to pass and whatnot. It's like when something passes, I'll kind of give it a little, <laughs> finally give it some um, uh, credence. But I guess what I'd say is I think it's good if we, okay, we, everybody wants a federal privacy law, right? But this is why we can't have nice things. Uh, it's because no one could agree on what goes in that law. And the things that we can't agree on have nothing to do with privacy itself. Uh, so it's a lot of lip service from politicians about whether it's, you know, on the on the left or the right or, or whoever, uh, of we need a strong privacy law to hold account, you know, the, the big tech companies uh, and others, right? And uh, so in absence of that, and with California being a very strong law in CCPA, uh, I'm not surprised by the promulgation of other state laws that are endeavoring to, you know, put something in place. Some are going to be weaker than others, right? So uh, the California folks' perspective is I don't want a federal law that's less protective to humans than CCPA is, right? We want something GDPR-like, but there's, you know, uh, each state now is kind of making that decision. And and some of the laws are, you know, really don't uh, protect people to the same degree and others do. Um, I live in Washington state. So this uh, uh, Washington law around... Um, what is it called? My health, my health, my data, my health, my data, I think is a really exciting law. I think that one is particularly uh, strengthening uh, the perspective that even though you are not covered by HIPAA, federal law for uh, for uh, privacy around uh, protected health data, uh, you still have an obligation that is very clear at the state level of, you know, needing to get permission and uh, having to kind of go through the same privacy protective uh, having the same rights, being able to ask about what data you have on me, being able to, you know, see if I have it amended or, or, or complain about it, you know, all those things. The, that is a helpful law that is going to be uh, in this age of uh, post row world where, uh, you know, just the fact that you travel to a clinic to ask questions uh, about your sexual health could actually land you in jail 
if it was about abortion and and, and um, you were seeking one and uh, passed past when you were allowed to have one in Texas. So I think that this is really firming up our healthcare protections in that in our state in Washington, given the promulgation of uh, in some of these states, uh, you know, uh, anti-abortion uh, laws and 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 making all of the conversations that people are having around maybe seeking abortion or location privacy, you know, adding more uh, lo location privacy requirements so that you can't, you know, start tracking someone and then sell that data to law enforcement, for instance, uh, without their permission or or having knowing that they're you're even giving this data to be tracked. So I think it's essential. I'm really excited about that one. Um, you know, some of the others are just they need a state privacy law and they're either going to be better or worse than uh, CCPA. Uh, I don't believe we'll ever have a federal privacy law, but that is the utopia that I would like like to work towards. Um, mm. I, yeah. I have a lot to say on this, but instead well, the of Washington rambling, law, I agree. You know. the, the Washington law could have, even though it's a health privacy law, could have a bigger impact than a lot of these uh, Virginia type laws uh, because it's, it's really strong, you know, the, yeah. the, the requirements for consent uh, or it's either consent or providing the service you're saying you're providing. Pretty much that's it. If you think about it in GDPR terms, those are the two legal bases for right. processing health data. And health data is pretty much anything that even slightly touches upon someone's health. So I think you're right there with the, the Washington law could be the most impactful. Mm -hmm.